today for recording my videos. And as you can see, it means that you can see me. Hello. Um, now, you aren't going to be working from your workbooks that you took home or I sent to you last week for this week. Now, the reason for that is the super teaching that's in your workbooks you can't actually do at home because we were going to work together as a group and, and do lots of group activities and group work um, in that unit. So unfortunately, we can't do that. However, what it does mean is it gives us the opportunity to do something different. And actually, you're going to learn about what is um, my sort of specialist subject, really, or, or at least part of, um, because you're going to do something uh, about the Napoleonic Wars, which happened between 1793 and 1815, which is, is what I actually spent lots of my time at university uh, studying, which, which personally I find really exciting. You hopefully, hopefully will do. Um, but actually, you're, you're going to be learning about not only um, the Napoleonic Wars, but you'll learn about um, the Spanish Armada as well, which you may have come across before. And um, in our new kind of question or topic, which you can see on the board or on the, the, the screen even, sorry, what wars should you know about in the time of empire from roughly 1500 until 1815? Now, before you start to do this activity or these activities, you're going to want to go ahead and read this box because it explains how it's going to work. Um, so pause the video here. Do that now. Spa pay special attention to the word significance and what it means because you need to understand it. Pause the video here and read now. Okay, hopefully you've read there, especially that there is no space to work in this workbook. There's no writing lines and things like you would normally have. So what that means is you need to make sure you've got some paper before you start. That could be your prep book. It could just be any lines paper that you've got around the house. Okay, once you're ready and you, you, you're all sorted, you can move on to the first task. Now you'll see why you need paper because really these are just scans from a textbook um, that I have. So you're gonna need to work somewhere else. Now, as it says at the top, one of the most famous attempts made to invade England came in 1588 when King Philip of Spain sent a massive armada to remove the queen, uh, Elizabeth from the English throne. He failed. Now, as it says, you're going to follow step-by-step -step instructions to try to work out why he failed. And then at the end, you're going to write an answer, a claim paragraph, basically, to explain your reasons as to why you think he failed. Okay? Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and read uh, the text here. Okay? Don't worry about reading all of these yet. I want you to focus on this part. All right? So go ahead and read that text, thanks, under Philip's motives. Pause the video here and do that now. Okay. So hopefully you've read that Philip was a pretty damn powerful man. Um, sorry, you're going to have to deal with my email and things going off occasionally. Um, yeah, Philip was a, was a pretty powerful man. Um, he also ruled a, a heck of a, a, a large empire, um, much bigger than Britain's empire at this point. And we need to understand his motives and why exactly he wanted to invade England. So in order to do that, you're going to need to read the yellow boxes now. Read the yellow boxes, find out his motive for invading England. Do that now. Pause the video. Okay, now we're going to use five different factors. That means five different things to try and work out our answer. Now it says there, here are the factors you use to analyze Williams' successes in 10, 1066. Obviously, we've not done that, but you're all very capable and you'll be able to do that without having practiced it. Um, so your five categories that you are going to think about are weapons, 
fighting forces, so that means soldiers, planning, how well planned was it, luck, and leadership, how well led was it. So those are the five factors that you're going to be thinking about to try and come up with your answer as to why the Spanish Armada failed, okay? Um, so you'll see on the next page, you've got some information about Philip's plan. So one of those factors that you're going to be thinking about, okay? Um, what I need you to do is go ahead and read Philip's plan, refer to the map as you're reading it, okay? Pause the video here, do that now. getting a look in my cupboards, year eight. Okay, so hopefully um, you've read there about uh, Philip's plan. Now, just in case you're not sure, an armada means a ton of ships, okay? So an armada is lots and lots and lots of ships all attacking at once, a big invasion force, okay? That's what Philip was wanting to send or planning to send in 1588. Now, once you've you've done that and you've read it, um, you're going to start to gather information to test something called a hypothesis. Now that sounds really, really posh and difficult. It's not. A hypothesis basically is just like an idea. Um, it's something that you want to find out if it's true. You think something is the reason why he lost. So as you can see, you can, it is telling you here to read about Philip's motives and plans. We've already done that. That's great. Once you've done that, you can move on to number two. And um, as it says, you need to draw a plan of how you would arrange the cards. So jot the reasons for your choice. So what that's referring to is those five reasons why... Uh, Philip of Spain lost the Spanish Armada, why it failed. So you can see here that this person on their piece of paper has just written where they think the order of importance these five are going to go. So this will be number one, the most important. You can see in the middle row that they actually think all of these are about the same level of importance. So they would all be number two. And then they think the third most important is leadership. Now you can order those however you want. You could do one, two, three, four, five. You could do two as the most important, two as the least important, whatever is totally up to you. But you need to draw them out in some sort of order on your page as to where you think they're gonna go. There's no right or wrong answer at this point. It's just what you think is the most to the least important. Pause the video here and do that now. Okay, now we're working like real historians today, which is exciting. And what you're going to do next is move on to step two. And as it says, you're going to use pages 116 to 119. Now you haven't got the page numbers on all of yours, but just so you're aware, it's this page, ships, m guns, men, and gold. This page, commanders and communication, decision point and what happens next, the battle of Gravelaine and the end of the Armada, okay? Um, don't worry about this yet. This is where you're gathering the information from, these, the pages I've just mentioned, okay? And um, what I would suggest you do, it tells you to collect information on cards. Well, you're not going to be able to do that because you haven't got cards. Um, so what I suggest you do, your paper that you're working on is split it into five. And, and I would say you probably need about half a page for each of the five things you're collecting information on. 
So you'll split your, your first page in two, two halves. And in the first half at the top, you'll write your first factor. You might write fighting forces, for example. At the top of the second half of the page, you'd write your second factor. You might write weapons, for example. And then as you go through the next few pages, any time you come across some information that fits with either of those factors, fighting forces or weapons, you're going to add them to those. For example, in fighting forces, I would write ships. The Spanish Armada consisted of 151 ships. 68 were warships. So 68 is actually the number I'm going to add here because that's fighting forces. There were 68 warships in the Spanish Armada. The other ships were transport ships to carry equipment. They're not fighting forces, okay? Um, I'm then looking for weapons, okay? Uh, oh, there's not much here. There were sailors on board. I think that actually fits in fighting forces again. So that's not going to work, but it will work. And I'll add it to my fighting forces section. Um, guns. Both sides had cannons of different shapes and sizes. The largest could fire a cannonball weighing up to 15 kilograms, about 200 meters. Okay, now I'm finding information that I can add to my second section on weapons. They had cannons. The biggest, up to 15 kilograms, was the size of the cannonball they fired, and they could fire that 200 meters. Okay, so that's what you're going to need to do on step two. Once you've done that, you're going to move on to step three you're going to review your evidence. Well, that really is a posh way of saying you're going to read what you've written down because you can only really make a decision about what's the least and most important if you've really thought about what you've recorded, okay? Then on step four, you're going to revise your hypothesis, check whether this kind of idea that you wrote down originally was correct, and then write your explanation. An explanation of what? Well, an explanation of why exactly the Spanish Armada failed. And you'll see if you scroll down and go through all the pages that you will have just read, that once you get to the last page, it prompts you to do that. Review your evidence. You should have gathered lots of evidence about why the invasion, invasion failed. Basically, compare and contrast your evidence. Revise your hypothesis. Rearrange your cards or the factors in order. Was your hypothesis that you wrote down originally, remember all those cards that you put in particular order, sorry, it's quite difficult to write with a mouse, it's like a dyslexic spider. Um, were, was that correct? Were you right? Or do you now need to rethink it and say, mm, actually, I think maybe weapons are first, or I think maybe leadership needs to come a bit higher. Um, once you are happy with the arrangement of your cards, as it says, you're ready to move on to step five. And step five is to write your explanation. As it says, there's no right or wrong answer here, but it's given you an example of how you could write it underneath. Um, a central factor, for example, was the failure for the Spanish to keep in touch with each other. An underlining factor was the failure of the Spanish to keep in touch with them. The key difference between the two, uh, two navvies was that the English were fighting closer to home. Basically, they're putting, going through each of the factors and describing importance from the most to the least important to explain why they think the Armada happened. It's like a slightly more advanced claim paragraph, okay? Because you'll see they're using evidence throughout. So that's really all you're doing. You're setting a hypothesis to begin with, what do you think was the most to the least important reasons as to why the Spanish Armada failed. Secondly, you're reviewing your evidence. You're testing your hypothesis by gathering information. You recheck your hypothesis, were you right? And then you're gonna write a detailed explanation as to why the Spanish Armada failed, okay? That's the first lesson that you should be doing this week. The second lesson then is very similar, but this time, as I said, we're focusing on the Napoleonic Wars, 1793 to 1815. But you're focusing on two important battles in that war. One of them, a sea battle, the Battle of, battle of Trafalgar, it happened in 1805. 
and the second, a land battle, arguably the most important land battle in British history up to that point, the Battle of Waterloo, won by uh, the Duke of Wellington, Arthur Wellesley, in 1815. Okay, so you're, you're going to focus, first of all, most of your time on the Battle of Trafalgar. Um, and you're actually going to be doing exactly the same thing or following the same process as you did before. You're going to start, as it says, with a hypothesis. Gather your evidence, review your evidence. And you're going to do that in exactly the same way, using exactly the same five factors as before. So you're thinking about leadership, about weapons, fighting forces, planning and luck. OK, there's nothing different here. You're doing all the same thing. You're gathering information based on the same five ideas. And you're going to use these pages. War with France, Napoleon's plan and the ships, the men, their lives and their guns, life on board, weapons, the French and Spanish fleets, the Battle of Trafalgar. OK, and finally, the battle itself. So you're just using that information to do the exact same thing as you did on the last page. You're then on step three, four and five, review your evidence, revise your hypothesis at the start. Remember, you will have put all those five factors in order of importance, this time thinking about the Napoleonic Wars and the Battle of Trafalgar. And then you're going to write up an answer at the end to explain why exactly Napoleon's invasion failed in 1805. OK, once you've done that, you've got some bonus tasks to do this week. Um, as I said, I'd like you to spend some time thinking about another very important battle, the Battle of Waterloo. Now, I'm also going to send you some video clips that you can watch that will give you some more information on that, because I just think it's a really interesting topic and I'd really like you to know more about it. Um, but also there's some work here that you can do um, in your activity but workbook. The first thing I'd really encourage you to do is read through the information here in blue. And once you've done that, read through the activity. And then basically, you're just going to follow the instructions. So as you'll see, it says number one, read the doing history on significance. That's this on the next page. It's telling you how significance works and how you can think about significance. You're then going to choose your criteria. You'll see on the doing page where it says doing history, is giving you lots of criteria here in the yellow boxes that you can use to test how significant an event was, in this case, how significant the wars were. You're gonna pick four or five maximum of these that you're gonna use to test. So for example, I might pick the scale of the wars with geography, how many countries it included, um, the way they changed life for people in Britain, and um, the ways they affected people around the world, because that will help me to see if something's globally significant rather than just significant in Britain. Um, uh, the, the heroic leaders, I want to remember these leaders like Napoleon, like uh, Nelson, like Wellington. Um, do they make us proud? So that might mean they mean something to us today. They, they kind of resonate with us. So I think I might pick those. Um, they, they make interesting and dramatic stories. Hey, if something's a good story, I'm going to want to know about it. Um, story is in the word history. That's what history is all about. It's stories. Once you've decided your criteria that you are going to use, and you can pick any, like I said, probably four to five maximum, um, decide whether you want them to be of equal importance. Do you think that some are more important than the others? For example, I might say that, well, actually, I think that it being more geographically spread, if it affects more people around the world, that's more important than this one about affecting people in Britain. If it affects more globally, it's more significant, for example. So decide which of yours are more or less important. Now, the next task you can't do, it asks you to use the top trumps cards on the last page. Um, you can't do that, but it doesn't matter because you can pick up on your knowledge you've learned today about the Spanish Armada and the Napoleonic Wars, but also think about other wars that you've studied. 
over your time in history in year seven and year eight. You could do about, uh, write about the Norman invasion, the Norman conquest in 1066. You could think about the civil war in England that you learned about in year seven. Um, you also might want to think about some of the wars we've studied this year, like the Seven Years' War in the 1700s, or Britain's, really the East India Company's wars in India to conquer India, okay? So you're gonna to need to think about a number of different wars, and then you're going to do this task at the bottom. Um, as it says on the last page, you're going to compare your choices with other groups. You're not going to do the other group bit, but you're going to compare your choices with other wars. What are the differences? Why are they different? Because once you've filled this table in, and you'll see each of these numbers refers to the factor, the thing that they're using to test significance. Um, and the weighting, well, that's how kind of significant it is. So, for example, if I thought the Spanish Armada, this is criterion one, the scale of wars, geographical spread, the weighting, um, well, that means one to five. So I'm going to say, uh, well, I think actually, sorry, ignore me, the weighting is how important it is. So if I thought one was more important than two, then this would be like three. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm then going to give each of the wars a rating between one and five. Um, now, you might not know what these are, so just ignore these. I'm just going to focus on this, the Armada, okay? Um, and I'm going to say, well, geographically, I don't think it's that important because it only really affects Spain and Britain. You could argue Spain's got an empire, but I don't think it's that important. So I'm going to say two. Um, the ways the sorry, the ways it changed life or affected people in Britain, I don't think it affected people that much, so I'm going to write one. Um, the ways it affected people around the world, again, I don't think it changed that much, so I'm going to write one. And four, they make interesting and dramatic stories. Well, I think the Armada is a very interesting story, so I'm going to write five. I'm going to pretend now that this one is actually the Napoleonic Wars. And I'm going to say geographical spread. Well, actually, I think it's pretty significant. Um, not globally, but definitely in Europe, because it involves lots of countries in Europe, the Napoleonic Wars. So I'm going to write four ways that it changed or affected the like, people, lives of people in Britain. I think it is pretty damn important. Some historians say it led to the modern world. So I'm going to write five. I think you're getting the idea. What you're doing is rating each of the wars that you're going to study. And like I said, include the Spanish Armada and the Napoleonic Wars but you might want to include other wars you've studied as well in your table, the Normans, the Civil War, the, the Seven Years' War, wars in India, for example, and rate how important they are for each of your criteria from above, from one to five. You also might have said some are more important than the other in your weighting. Now, at the end, what that means is you're going to be able to give, I would add another column, and you're going to be able to give each one a total, it would be out of here, for example, out of 20. Um, and that will help you to work out which wars are the most important. Okay, that's it for these lessons. I hope you enjoyed and you'll hear from me again next week. Bye.